I have not found it necessary to use a minor mood-altering substance since May 1st, 2011. One of the hardest moments was certainly in the beginning. Um, at that particular time, my daughter was three years old. Uh, she's 15 now. Um, and I was really an unsuitable father. And, and they told me something, and, and that, that they word is very broad, whether it was out of treatment or was a sponsor in 12-step or those in my peer networks, that I really needed to put recovery first, really above my daughter. And it was hard to grasp at first. Well, this child means more to me than anything. I entered into the treatment center because I thought, you know, this is my chance to be a dad. Um, and so that, that was tough. That was a tough period of time to really put myself first as what's really required in this, in this can be arduous process at, at any given stage. But in the beginning, it's, it's, um, it's very heavy to, to take a look at myself and what I've done to my life and the fact that I'm certainly unemployable at the moment, that I'm looking at perhaps jail time, in my case I was, and then I was an unfit father. The community I grew up in, there was virtually no talk of addiction. And I, I know that happens in a lot of different communities. And so th there was already a built-in stigma from a young age. The treatment center that I landed in in 2009 had a recipe for success, and it was quite linear. It was once you leave this place, you know, attend our aftercare program, and then search out a 12-step meeting to attend. In, in, in a lot of ways, addiction, active addiction is anchored in, into the way of thinking, you know, behavioral health and the like. So it was a, it was a formulation of new behaviors and new habits, positive habits, uh, habits that fostered a, a productive way of life, um, eliminating things for me in the order that they were killing me. And so for me, that was, you know, eventually tobacco and recovery looks different, certainly for me over time. It has taken on different shapes and forms. I joined in around 2013 into the peer uh, certified peer track and, and getting educated, working in the field, um, a bunch of hours, uh, that 500 hours are actually required for that state certification. So um, the peer process for, for someone like me to be in a room and talk about my experience in active addiction um, legitimizes the fact that it doesn't really look a certain way. The disease of addiction, alcoholism, does not pick and choose who it spares. So the peer group itself uh, brings down the walls of hierarchy. It, it is the best way for me to, to sort of describe. Uh, we're often treated as objects rather than recipients. And, and we talk about that as peers and certified peers and the like, that we bring each other up. And so we are more recipients of one another's um, love and care and, 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 and way of recovery in life that, that, we, that we try to foster with one another. So it brings down the boundaries. It brings down barriers. It brings down stigma. Stigma is a huge, huge boundary that, that keeps people uh, outside the hallways of recovery and, and seeking help. And there's nothing quite like being free from the compulsion and obsession to really destroy myself. And for those who perhaps are listening to this and struggling w with addiction, in active addiction, in the th really in the throes of it, that it is possible. And it is a life of joy that is quite hard to explain uh, unless I, I give it a shot and give myself a chance. Hi, I'm Kabir Singh, and I'm thankful for every day in recovery and won't be stopped by the stigma of addiction. <laughs>